All right, so welcome, ladies, gentlemen, and others to <laughs> the Language and Gender podcast. Uh, my name is Mac, and my pronouns are they, them, he, him. My name is Blake, and I use the pronouns he, him, and his. Yeah, so I think to have a conversation about gender-neutral pronouns, we have to put it in context historically. Um, it's pretty hard to pinpoint exactly when uh, language reformers began addressing the problem of gender neutrality and pronouns in English. Uh, the first major push occurred in the mid-18th century, but was primarily concerned with addressing mixed gender groups. Uh, so if you're familiar with Spanish, um, mm -hmm. when you address a group of males, it's ellos, females, it's ellas. Mm -hmm. We don't have that in English, and uh, some people started noticing that, and they tried addressing it. Weren't very successful. <laughs> Uh, since then, there have been a lot of attempts to um, socially engineer pronoun reform. Uh, in the 1970s, the feminist movement began uh, questioning the generic masculine. If anyone's read any old academic literature, uh, they addressed everyone as he. And they found fault in that, rightfully so, and uh, they were actually successful in their pronoun reform. Uh, relatively recently, um, the push for pronoun reform is focused on LGBTQ issues, mm -hmm. primarily those who are gender non-conforming or anyone that falls outside of the uh, binary, the gender binary. Um, it hasn't been too successful yet, um, but we're still working on it. Uh, <laughs> currently, institutions such as uh, Oxford are pushing to reform pronoun usage. Um, they're, I feel like they're they're gaining traction slowly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've definitely uh, read a few articles uh, by the New York Times and I think Times Magazine. They've um, cited some things by Oxford and their use of gender neutral pronouns and their push for that. So I think that's very interesting. So we're making progress, but not as quickly as many of us as, uh, as many of us would hope, and not as prevalently as many of us would hope. Um, yes. Mac here has some anecdotal story to give. Yeah, so uh, with pronoun usage, I feel like there are three uh, specifics um, that need to be addressed, mostly uh, the difference between biological sex, uh, gender identity, and gender expression. Um, so the biological sex uh, refers to the sex that somebody is born, uh, so either male, female, or even intersex. Um, and gender identity refers to uh, how one mentally views themselves or how they um, just feel mentally inside. Um, so like for me, I was biologically born female, but my gender identity is that of a male. Um, and then there's gender expression, which is how you choose to express yourself uh, verbally, how you choose to dress, how you choose to act around others. Um, so for me, I choose my gender expression to be more masculine. Um, that's just kind of something that I have always been, or how I've always choose to express myself, even when I was four, five, six, like growing up, uh, I was always acted more masculine, I always uh, looked up to my older cousins, uh, they were male, and I was always playing with BB guns and basketball, so that's just always how I have expressed my gender identity, even though um, I didn't know what that was yet. Um, so the way these three terms play into pronoun usage is the way that others perceive you and pick those pronouns. Um, so I work at a local cookie shop here um, and I get obviously a lot of customers coming in and like picking pronouns just based off how they perceive me. Um, based off how you look. Yeah. It's because gender is, it's a social construction. Yeah. So they're, they're basing your gender off of what you look like, which I've always found quite interesting. Uh, you would make an assumption based on something so socially, like, subjective. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Because even though, like, I am transgender and I do use he, him pronouns, there are plenty of people who don't identify as transgenders, who still identify as um, the biological sex they're born as, but do present more masculine. And so that becomes an issue there of people picking pronouns that don't necessarily align with them either. Um, 
So then this brings in the question, how important is gender neutral pronouns in our society today? Um, and the importance is very great, <laughs> obviously. Clearly. Um, yeah, especially <laughs> at uh, college level um, with university students, I feel like it's extremely important because I get a lot of female university age students who come in and they will use she, her, hers pronouns for me. But then I also get a lot of male college age students who come in and will use he, him, his pronouns. And every so often you get that very small, limited few people who actually decide that it'll be best to use gender neutral pronouns. But the that's very rare and those people are very few. Few and, few and far between. Yeah, exactly. So how, how does it feel to be misgendered by someone else? Um, it's very oppressive. I try not to take it as personally as I probably should, um, just because it's probably one of the few times I will ever see them. Um, but if it was somebody that I saw often, like a friend or um, just a client who comes in daily, weekly, I would probably address it then mm -hmm. and probably correct them then. Um, but because it is a, just quick transaction, hand them their cookie. I try not to mess with it too much, um, but it, it doesn't feel great half the time. It's just in the back of my head, like still there, you yeah. know? Yeah. Uh, does it does it affect like your self-esteem or like how you feel you identify? You know, because I feel like that oh, has yeah. a lot, you know. Yeah, um, so even when I was like in high school and started, uh, dressing the way I wanted to dress and like cut my hair really short and everything like that. Um, I felt like I was getting addressed more as a guy then than I am now being 21 years old and have uh, expressed my gender this way for the past five to six years now. Um, so, and then coming in uh, my gender identity coming into fruition my freshman year of college and like uh, finding a term that fit with me uh, now being misgendered affects that more than ever I feel like I feel like I try to present more masculine or um, act more masculine just just to um, make it so they're less uh, opportunities for people to misgender me even though I there are certain aspects of my life that are are still considered fairly feminine um, mm -hmm. uh, like shopping cooking uh, those two things alone are very feminized activities that I greatly enjoy um, and as well as uh, I don't know, growing out hair. Like, I feel like I always have to cut my hair really short just to be perceived more masculine by our community. Yeah. That's interesting. The last part is actually, like, actually really interesting. I never thought of being forced to, like, express, you know, as a very cisgendered person, I've never mm -hmm. thought of expressing my gender, like, so consciously. Yes. And the fact that you have to. Yeah, it's a little disheartening, you know, that someone actually has to yeah. physically manifest it in order to even get the recognition that they deserve for, you know, yeah. being who they are. Yeah, because, like, I feel like if our society wasn't so blatantly ignorant about uh, non-binary, gender non-conforming individuals, uh, I would feel more open to uh, expressing my femininity. Mm -hmm. um, I would feel more open into having somewhat longer hair or uh, even like painting my nails or something as small as that. Like I feel like I'd be more open to doing any of that. But it's difficult to feel secure enough with my uh, gender identity and gender expression to express my feminine side. And I think this is all bringing up the social importance of pronoun usage mm -hmm. uh, as we move forward. Um, you can't always determine one's gender by looking at them. Exactly, right? exactly. Like uh, like I said earlier, I get a lot of female students uh, referring to me as she, hers, but how, how do they get that from the way I express myself, mm -hmm. you know? Um, because 
understandably, I do have more feminine features, like my face is more round and everything like that. But because of these features, you can't just base off a pronoun off of that. And so like perpetuating the gender binary and labeling others based on even like an outward appearance or more feminine features or more masculine features is oppressive and it does not feel great <laughs> at all. Um, yeah, so uh, it's definitely a privilege uh, to not have to worry about which pronoun you have to use. Yeah, I, I've never had to never had to worry about that. So it's definitely it should be eye opening to everyone watching this that how how you're privileged being cisgendered if you're cisgendered and watching this. It's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's it's heavy. Um, yeah. It's like I will never understand what it's like to be a cisgender individual. Yeah. But then on the backside, you will never understand what it's like to be a non-binary transgender, gender non-conforming individual, and feel that oppression or uh, completely understand the privilege that you own. Exactly. I I will never actually understand it, but mm -hmm. we can work towards understanding, yes. which I think is what this is all about. Yes. Um, I wish we even had a third person that was completely non-binary, that yeah. was completely gender fluid, because I wonder how they feel about Yeah, because like... That, you know, it's slightly different. It's the same, but it's slightly different. Yeah, especially if you're gender fluid and you're completely open, obviously fluid, to how you express yourself. So like one day you are more masculine, the next you're more uh, feminine, like... I wonder how, what pronouns they choose to use or not use, or, or do if they, they switch daily, or do they, or if they kinda... just keep to a gender neutral. Yeah. I think it, I think it just depends on the person. Honestly, that's wow. Yeah, yeah it's, a, that's, it's a whole other can of worms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you yeah. still have to respect their choice. Yes. I think that's the main thing. Yeah. Um, since we're talking about pronouns, it's also important to talk about the linguistic importance of. Uh, gender neutral pronouns and their usage. Um, so going into rhetorical theory here, um, language directly affects how we perceive the world. Um, it's, at least in my head, it's hard to have ideas that I don't have words for. Yeah. Or at least words make my thoughts easier. Yeah, right? yeah. Um, so if our gender pronouns are binary, we're most likely going to think in a binary, which we, I think we've proven here, <laughs> at least through anecdote, we've proven. Yeah. Um, and it's not because we, we, we know that there are people that fall outside of the binary, mm -hmm. but I feel like without a word, without a word, they're not as visible. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, certainly for me, uh, when I was trying to figure out what my gender identity was, I didn't come to know the term transgender until I was 18, 19 years old. I never knew there was a specific term to, uh, what's the word I'm thinking of? To define To me. define yourself. Yeah, to define What was person. the experience where, so you didn't know the term, but I'm sure you were having like an identity conflict. What was that experience oh, yeah. like to not know the term that you were feeling? Like? Oh man, it was so frustrating. Like. I knew from a very young age that I was, quote, different. different yeah. yeah, I know that's so awful to use, <laughs> but still, it takes on the same meaning. I did feel different um, from uh, other biological females. Um, and I, though I identified more with uh, cis males, um, there was still that in-between that was just conflicting. Um, so not having a term to define how I felt, how I felt that I was uh, mentally male, but my body did not align with that, was very heartbreaking for the very like longest time. And it wasn't until I watched educational videos like this <laughs> that helped me define who I was. And there's actually, there's some psychological research, now this isn't a perfect analogy, mm -hmm. but um, it kind of highlights the idea of visibility in language. Um, I'm gonna read an excerpt from it actually, and this is um, language constructing um, reality when it comes to color. Um, and it says, color words are more than a clever way to sell crowns. 
A study by British researchers suggests that color words in a given language shape human perception of color, perhaps explaining why some native English-speaking children familiar with the rainbow of colors in the Crayola 64 pack actually can tell rust from brick and moss from sage. While children who grow up speaking languages with fewer color names lump such hues together. Now, this isn't saying that the children are seeing different colors. They're still seeing the same colors. They're mm -hmm. seeing the same hue of a certain color, like the difference between rust and brick. Mm -hmm. I probably could not tell the difference. Yeah. I would bump them together probably in a red. <laughs> but if you have a word for it, suddenly it becomes more salient. Mm -hmm. And I think that is the primary problem with not having a viable gender-neutral pronoun currently. That's why oh, yeah. it's spread. We're not... We don't see it. We yeah. bump everyone as a he or she. Yeah. And there's nothing to... We, we use they, yes. Yeah. But it's not wide enough that we necessarily see it. Yeah, no. We, we see male and female and nowhere in between. We don't see the gray. We see the black and the white. Um, and I feel like that's an issue that will always be prevalent, but it's something that can be discussed more and taught more, that mm -hmm. everything is indeed a spectrum, um, including pronouns. So even like gender neutral pronouns, there is a wide variety of them. Uh, a lot of people know of they, them, theirs. Uh, I feel like that one's very prevalent um, and is used more commonly today. It's definitely gaining traction. I hadn't really used it until I got to college. Yeah. Because I never really had to. Yeah, same. Um, and once I came to college, I found many friends who preferred those pronouns. And even in having friends who uh, do prefer those pronouns, it's still difficult at times. It's like, awkward at first, I would it say. It is. It is. And even like, I even though I know that is their preferred pronouns, I still sometimes slip. And it's not, it's not always fun to do that and you feel bad about yourself, but uh, it's just something that you apologize for mm -hmm. and kind of move on, but... It's okay to mess up. Yeah, like... <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> yeah, like, even, like, with anybody, if you mess up any sort of pronouns, it's okay. Like, <laughs> we forgive you. Um, but, like, even with they, them, theirs, like, it's difficult, but, like, with the a new Oxford one, mm -hmm. the Z, Zim, Zers, I... That has, I don't see that gaining traction. I have not seen it in context, actually. Yeah, I neither have I. And even if it was in context, I can't see that gaining any traction. I really want it to gain traction, though. It's, it's actually my favorite of these. <laughs> I mean, yes, I can agree. There is also uh, V, Ver, Vis, uh, Vers, Self, and then Z, Zim, Zer, 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 Self. And then there's always just the option of using their name, um, which... Honestly, it's something I prefer. I think it makes things easier mm -hmm. uh, for some people. Unless I'm uh, close acquaintances with somebody, then I will tell them. A lengthy people. conversation, that can become difficult. Yeah. But for most interactions, yeah. just calling you yeah. by your name is yeah, exactly. good enough. Exactly. I don't think I've called you by your preferred pronouns yet, honestly, in all of my conversations. Yeah, <laughs> now I, that I look back, I don't know if I have because I haven't needed to. Yeah, like there certainly isn't a need unless you are close acquaintances. Like I feel like if you're best friends with somebody and you're telling a story possibly about them or like uh, around family, then I can see it being like pronoun usage mm -hmm. being definitely more prevalent. But I feel like with just a classmate or uh, a professor, I feel like it's just easiest to avoid pronouns usage. Uh, and just use their name. Uh, exactly. I mean, you wear a name tag at work, right? No. Oh, you don't. Well, you no. need to start wearing name tags because this is going to solve so much problems. I've tried, man. I've tried I'm getting traction on this. <laughs> it's just not happening. <laughs> it's not happening. Corporate isn't taking it. Man. But yeah, if only. If yeah, that only, would make life a lot easier. It, it would. I would even just wear a button that just says they, them. You know, have you that seen? would also work. Exactly. Like, But I feel like wearing that every day can just get a be a pain like it sucks that you would have to uh, um that you're in a position you have to yeah you have to assert my pronouns your pronouns <laughs> you have to assert them you have to tell people yeah yeah and that that's that's pretty much gonna be my whole life though it, it is like, i feel like even, it's getting better hopefully by the time we're old people that will come back watch this video and laugh 
Um, <laughs> it's it's become normalized, but yeah, one can only hope. But one can hope. asserting gender identity in today's society is too real. Too real. It's too real. We're, it's a long fight. Th- there's a lot of conf- <laughs> there's a lot of confusion, and misconception, yeah, and misinformation. I, yeah, exactly. And we I can't even get past the idea of the gender binary right now, even. Yeah, so, yeah. There, there is no outside the binary no. to a lot of people. Um, but there is, like, like I said, a lot of confusion, even with gender neutral pronouns and the use of they pronouns, and there's a lot of um, backfire, I guess, and to the usage of them. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah. I think as these issues become more prominent, it's, the backlash is going to be harsher, and then it's going to get better. It's kind of like the whole marriage equality thing. Yeah. A lot of people didn't really think about it that much until it became prominent, and then... Then there was backfire. It just completely blew up. Yeah. And now I think we're finally settling back down. So a hopefully little. we're going to... We're, we're getting there. We need to light the firecracker and get to blow up. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, I feel like, especially um, being university students, I feel like we can get that, get the ball rolling. Just a little bit. Yeah. And I feel like that is happening a lot more. I think it is. Yeah. Especially in our tiny little campus. Yeah, I've noticed... A lot more uh, acceptance and um, a lot more prevalence towards mm-hmm. using gender neutral. And pronouns. even the media, as much as I hate BuzzFeed, I know yeah. there's been there have been quite a few BuzzFeed videos about this issue. And oh yeah. Other like Vox. I know yeah, there so. any mainstream media that liberal media yeah. <laughs> is is going to be very. Um, on the front edge yeah. of the social... Yeah, yeah. So oh, this oh. is... They're going to be pushing the progression for progressive movements. So we got to <laughs> push behind them. Yeah. So in summary for this part, I'm going to say that the they, them, their, theirs themselves is probably the most viable. Yeah, moving forward, theory. yes. Yeah. yeah. And maybe... Or calling them by their name. Yeah. Those or, are your two best options. Yeah. For right now, at least. So. I personally really like the ZZM Zier, and that's the one that's used by Oxford. So I feel like it's got a little more legitimacy. So I if you like want to make it happen... Would, I feel like people would back that only because they view they, them, theirs as a plural pronoun instead of a singular pronoun. Yeah, it kind of gets rid of the confusion. Yeah. Because it's not yeah. even that people think it's grammatically correct. Sometimes in conversation, is legitimately confusing. <laughs> yeah. Um, depending on the context, you know, if you're talking about exactly. a group of people and you're talking about a singular person and then they yeah. prefer the they, their, them, it, it can gets, get it gets a little confusing, which oh. you can use the name then, because, you know, that's also... But yeah. English, I think works we can't purposely socially engineer it you just have to start using things yeah and when you use it and a lot of people start using it it catches on and it becomes a just real like thing, anything you know? in society yeah yeah, yeah. so and i start using it start look it up on oxford Z- everyone start Z- using Zer. it please the next big pronouns <laughs> the next big thing we're gonna make it happen and it started <laughs> here at ball state remember that um so I briefly uh, discussed about this. The started, common, yeah. yeah, the common arguments and reputations. Um, so a lot of people like to think that using they, them, their uh, pronouns is just grammatically incorrect. Um, <laughs> Which they are incorrect, technically. Yeah, yeah, they are. <laughs> they are incorrect. <laughs> um, but the way I view it is when somebody says this as an argument, they're just saying that, like, my sense of elitist grammar is more important than respecting who you are, and I'd rather just oppress you and be grammatically correct than be polite. Correct. And, it's not yeah. even an objective correct. I'm an yeah. English major, and I'm going to tell you right now, singular there is not only a thing, it is a correct thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That is acknowledged. <laughs> <laughs> and it's even been acknowledged as correct English by Oxford Dictionary. I got some backing. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> and then a lot of people also just, like like I said before, like to think that it's plural and you're just one person. But, like, like I just said, 
Oxford Dictionary backs it. <laughs> and we do it all the time in conversation, not even thinking about it. When you refer to someone, um, like I might say that, I, I can't think of an example, but like even in writing, I had to break a long time when I used one and I would say there or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, that's technically singular right. there that yeah. we do all the time. And we say, we do it more than we think just talking. Yeah. And I think it's, when we become aware of these things, suddenly it becomes a big deal. Yeah. But when it comes naturally, or when it becomes normalized, it's not not a big people. (laughs) Everyday usage of singular they is, it's common with everybody. But as soon as you try to um, pinpoint and locate that singular they as being a pronoun for somebody else, uh, it becomes an issue. Um, And people just get upset and think it's not okay and then they think it's just too hard but like honestly we do it all the time and all even, the time. even if it's hard like you practice it just like anything else like I'm going I went from she her hers pronouns to he him his and it, it took practice like people I'm close with were faulty at misgendering me but they eventually got the hang of it like it just takes time, and if you really care about that person or want to respect somebody, you will take the time to practice or um, just be correct when gendering them or using correct pronouns. Yeah. yeah, LeBron James did not become the best basketball player in the world overnight. You gotta practice. Yeah. Um, actually, my favorite argument on here is that it's uncommon. Yeah. Which I think is absolutely absurd. While it may be statistically uncommon, is that not an argument to to say, wow, these people are uncommon, they're probably suffering some sort of identity crisis, dealing with Mm -hmm. an unimaginable amount of pressure. Shouldn't we respect them more because they're in a vulnerable place? Yeah, (laughs) statistics for suicide rates of uh, gender non-conforming individuals is astonishingly high. The statistic rates of... um, being uh, kicked out of the house or not getting a job are so incredibly high compared to those who identify with their biological sex. And I feel like it goes hand in hand, like if respect, like we, we are the few <laughs> and we, we deserve as much respect as anybody else. And pronoun usage is included in that. A huge part of it. Yeah. Uh, it's, yeah. I can't even. <laughs> I can't even <laughs> begin to imagine. Like in the last couple of weeks, I've gained so much empathy towards this. It's, yeah. It's even hard to imagine that people throw out those refutations as actual arguments. To yeah. Me. Um, yeah. It's we just keep on bringing back respect. It's a matter of respect. Mm-hmm. If someone wants to be called something, if my name was Robert, and I wanted to go by Bob, and I hated being called Robert. You would probably call me Bob. Exactly. It's no different with pronouns. Mm-hmm. Just think of it that way. It's not mind-breaking. Yeah. It, <laughs> yeah, it really isn't. It's not making your life any harder. It's making somebody else's life easier. Exactly. Yeah. And as we, I mean, you just pointed out, I've seen those statistics before with suicide, mm-hmm. depression, you know, to be in a group that's consistently marginalized, consistently, your identity is in debate. Yeah, you know, constantly. It's constantly in debate. How you identify is debated by people you do not know and yeah. who do not know you. Yeah. So I feel like the least that we can do is respect people's pronoun usage. Yeah. It's, it's not hard, as we've said. There's really no argument against it. If someone, and like we said, if, if someone, if you accidentally misgender someone, apologize. Apologize. I hope they correct you. You know, yeah. I really, I hope they correct you so then you can learn. Yeah. Because a lot of times we learn from discomfort. And if you so, are the few people who do respect others and actually use people's preferred pronouns or use gender neutral pronouns when you do not know the person, just continue to advocate for that. Like, honestly, I feel like. If you get anything out of this podcast video, like advocacy for gender neutral pronouns and respect of others, like that's all 
that's all we're trying to get at here. Like, there's no question about it's it. It's pretty simple. Yeah, pretty simple. Yeah, I think, I think that's it. Yeah, I, I think, think we're going to be a wrap on our first podcast. Yeah, probably our final podcast. So I hope you enjoyed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.